If I had some salt packets, I would be throwing them at the camera right now. But you know what I do got? I got myself an Ultra Ball. And you know what? I'm going to ping catch you in my Ultra Ball as we talk about salty Yu-Gi-Oh players. Because the format's dog water. So um, let's talk about some salty, salty Yu-Gi-Oh players. Y'all need to go get some pepper instead of being so salty. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, is your host with the most, who is definitely not the most saltiest, although I have been, Avery LR32 here, destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button, so we can climb even higher, the 1400 ladder, we're almost at 1470, only 30 subscribers away from 1500, I really do appreciate all the support, hope you're having a fantastic day, as we're waiting until late August for a brand new ban list, that if it doesn't fix the game, well, we might as well hold a funeral for this game, but... I want to talk about something that I actually don't think I've ever talked about on the channel before, and that is the salt. The salty, salty of the saltiest of Yu-Gi-Oh players. And believe it or not, what inspired this idea was maybe just about 10 minutes ago when my... <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. My dad lost like his eighth or ninth game in a row on, on past the first minute. Master Shits, aka Master Duel, but... As we say in all of our spiels, I refuse to call Master Duel Master Duel. We will always call it Master Shits until it's a good game, which, spoiler alert, it never freaking will be. But he lost, like, his ninth, tenth game in a row, whatever it was. And what's really big on Master Shits right now is the Horus cards. Now, if you're a competitive player like your boy, if you watch this channel, you're most likely a competitive player. I highly doubt I have any casual players on here, which, if I do cool. I hope that you enjoy the content. If not, I'm a competitive player. So I don't play that game because I'm not going to play in a format with Max C. And I've made countless videos about how the game is dog water garbage. I'm not going to waste your time reiterating that. But the Horus cards are really big, especially when you're in a best of one format. Woo! Um, <laughs> because you can just cheese people with King Sark. You can set up Quibbeshef and Seti. You can set up all these things. So if your opponent is playing like a going second garbage rank 8 access deck. Sorry, did I just say that out loud? My dad plays that kind of deck sometimes. <laughs> um, you know, if they lightning storm your back or you're going to be like, okay, cool. Quibbeshef, I've got four monsters with different names. I'm going to go ahead and just draw four cards. <laughs> um, so... Cards like that are seeing a lot of play, especially like whenever stuff is brand new in Master Shits, people will spend their gems or whatever it is that they're blowing their money on this game, which if you're blowing your money on Master Shits, you're wasting your money. Like, that's a whole other thing in and of itself. I've already discussed that in the past. But people will want to get these new cards to play with, right? Like we saw Promethean Princess go into Master Shits before it came to the real game. The issue is, is that Again, as I've talked about before, back when like even Kelly Locke wrote an article about uh, Master Duel, aka Master Shits, I feel like I have to kind of word it differently sometimes or else I get demonetized. But anyway, besides the point, um, Kelly Locke wrote an article and was saying, you know, maybe we'll see people come from Master Duel into the real game. And I talked about how the format is just so different. You're going to be months behind. No one's going to want to waste their time. You know, if, if Konami was introducing cards into Master Shits, at the same time that they introduce them to the TCG format, not necessarily the OCG format, or if you want to do OCG format, that's fine too, whatever, you get a better idea of what is going on in the current format. My dad plays a lot of Master Duel, right? And so because of that, he knows like what a lot of the older decks from like six to eight months ago do. But if I give him Fiendsmith or I show him the combos, he's not going to know what's going on. One, because he's just not a combo player. Two, I mean, he thinks Runic is, Runic stun is combo heavy and it's too slow. And three, because it's not in Master Shits yet. So, like, he knows what Flunder and Sword Soul do, but he doesn't know with, like, Ubel or even what Snake Eyes Fiendsmith does. He kind of knows what Snake Eyes does because he sees it all the time because Promethean Princess is legal. And even though the deck is good and it's had hits to it in the game, it doesn't have the same hits in the IRL game. And then he gets pissed when he gets blown out by the one random Kashtira Horus deck that's playing Horus cards, even though Horus cards are garbage. But when you're in a best of one scenario, you have a lot of cards that are better in that game compared to the IRL game where you're playing a match. You can't just cheese people with Horus cards or you brick and then you're crapping all over the floor. And... 
my dad was salty, right? Like, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and, like, poke fun at my dad because we've all been salty. I have been salty. I mean, I, I, I think I made a deck profile, like, about Sprite when Sprite first came out, and I busted my thumb because I got salty, and I, like, slammed my fists together after I lost a match to a guy that was slow playing who should have been DQ'd. Um, like, I've gotten pissed. We've all gotten pissed about this game. But... Then I started reading people on Reddit, and some of those stories were hilarious. And the main thing that I want to, I guess, bring up in this video is, like, man, the amount of salt that is in this community sometimes is hilarious. Like, when my dad got salty and telling me about, like, how he lost against this garbage Horus Cash Tira deck, and I'm trying to explain to him, like, look, the format's totally different. You're not going to see those garbage cards in the game. He's like, I'm just going to stop playing 8-axis. This is too combo-heavy. I've lost twice now, running out of time reading cards, and I'm like, bro, you, you said for, like, over a year that 8-axis was, like, a good deck, like, and you know how it works. Like, it's not combo-heavy. You're like, it's combo-heavy. I just need to play a 40-card stall deck, no win condition, play Mahama, play Skill Drain, play all these things. I'm like, you just need to play Runic Stun. He goes, no, nah, I tried Runic Stun. Runic Stun's too combo-heavy. It's too slow. You're sitting there drawing one card after another. You're setting up D-Fisher, and then they blow away your board. You can't do anything. And I'm like, these are the type of players, there are players that exist in this game, because I've seen them on YouTube and elsewhere where they're like, oh, we need to, I wouldn't say that this is really a bad take, although it's kind of a bad take, but they're like, we need to ban Apollosa, we need to ban this, we need to ban Skill Dream, we need to ban Black Witch, blah, 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 we need to ban all these cards. And these type of players, especially those who loved Mystic Mind, oh, that created such a divide in the community, and this, this was the biggest thing with it, right? Mystic Mine, especially, when that card was legal for four freaking years, divided the community in so much a way where people that hated what Yu-Gi-Oh! has become today would play Mystic Mine stall decks to troll the community when yet all they're doing is just helping the card get banned. And then eventually, like, all the meta decks started playing Mystic Mine just to be able to stop the opponent from playing so that they could get resources back. It was very unhealthy. We all remember how it was. So, but you had these players who just hated what Yu-Gi-Oh has become playing these Mystic Mind decks. Meanwhile, they're just salty being at events all day if they're losing because they're like, oh, these decks are too combo heavy. Mystic Mind, it, it, it needs to still stay at three and skill drain at three. Duh, duh, duh. And it's like, bro, I'm sorry that Yu-Gi-Oh is not in fucking 2010 anymore. Go play Edison format. Go play Go format. Like, you do you, Sugar Boo Bear. Like, I'm going to be on over here playing, like, my Century on cards, King Calamity the fuck out of you. Or I'm going to be over here playing my Yubel Fiendsmith or my White Forest, whatever. Like, Yu-Gi-Oh! is still the game that we all know and love to a degree, but it's not what it was back in 2012 or even 2013. I've been playing this game for 16 years competitively, really, and I've known about the game since, like, it came out. I'm sorry that you're salty that the game is not what it used to be, but I love your stories and I love when you make your opponent salty and not yourself getting salty. The thing is, is that yes, you can't prepare for every situation, but sometimes you just got to take it on the chin and just say like, man, shit happens. Sometimes you get bad luck. Look back at me when I went to YCS Indianapolis, right? And if you read my, if you can go back and read my community post on the channel. I was salty AF. Round one, I went against Dinomorphia at an over 1,000 player YCS. I traveled hundreds of miles to go play a scrub who ended up scrubbing out. That's why I'm calling him a scrub. I ended up playing a scrub who was playing Dinomorphia. And then later on in the tournament, I was X2 and I played against a scrub playing Vanquished Soul. Like, why am I going to prepare for these bad players with their bad decks when I'm trying to prepare for Snake Eye and, like, the Tempai Mirror and, like, maybe Yubel? Like, I... I don't even really think that's insulting of me to say because the players I played against when I looked up their Kasi IDs, they scrubbed out. At the same time, does that make me a bad player because I lost to these decks that inherently I have a bad matchup against because I was on Tempai at the time? No, absolutely not. It was just a bad matchup. I mean, you talk about bad luck. Like you start off against Dinomorphia, which is a tough matchup for Tempai, and I'm X1 out of the gate and I'm practically crapping my pants. Like it happens. What what do you think the odds were showing up to almost a 3,000 player NAWCQ that some dude got absolutely obliterated by Ancient Gears, regardless of whether he made the correct plays or not? I've seen some of my subscribers saying, well, he was a bad player, he made incorrect plays. Regardless of all of that, just 
take it for face value. Do you think that player was saying, yes, I should prepare for Ancient Gears because they got new support out of Infinite Forbidden, and I'm going to prepare because I may end up on, on a feature match where I'm playing against a 53-card Ancient Gear pile that didn't even really look that optimized. It gets a lot better with Ancient Gear statue, by the way. That card's fucking bananas. No, he's not preparing for that. And if you're preparing for those kinds of decks because, I don't know, you saw them in Master Shits five times, and you're like, oh man, like, Ancient Gears are good, I need to prepare for this. Stop it. Stop it. You, you go get your scrub on out the room. And if it's if it's an issue of waiver, I'm not trying to be a scrub. It's because I'm trying to learn the game and get better. Watch my videos for that. Or if you have friends that play the game, ask them like, hey, what card should I play to, you know, get better? What deck should I prepare for for this regional? YCS, NAWCQ, whatever it is. You know, even my dad's like, oh, you know, maybe I should play Maconkos. Maconkos are pretty good. I just lost to Maconkos, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like... Dad, you're playing Master Shits. It's the best of one. You're going to get cheesed by those garbage decks like Makanko. That's number one. Number two, Isolde is still legal. That's the only reason why that deck's even relevant at all in that game. Number three, the deck is garbage because we have a totally different card pool that Master Shits is basically, what, a year behind on now? Maybe six months if you're being generous? So, look, if you're salty about the game... Take a break, Sugar Boo Bear. That's what I've been doing. I got absolutely raffle stomped earlier by some scrub deck, and I'm trying to play White Force, and I just, I wiped my hands clean of it and said, you know what? White Force will be better once we get Azamina. Right now, the deck's like tier two to rogue at best. It's really not all that good. I love White Force, but it's really not all that good. I'm gonna go play something else. My ass is gonna go play Ancient Gears, and I'm gonna set up a fortress, and you're gonna be crapping all over the floor. <laughs> Stop being salty about the game. Take a rest. Take a break. Go bang on some bongos. Go get a beer. Do whatever you need to do, Sugar Boo Bear. Meanwhile, the game's going to get better with a balance. And if you think that a balance won't change the game, that's a you problem, Sugar Boo Bear. And I'm sorry. I wish that the game was back to what it was some days, like 2010, 09, 08, 2012, whatever. That's not what the game is today. Maybe it's not for you. As they always say, you don't quit Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh quits you. But I hope you stick around because I like making content. I love making y'all laugh. And uh, I hope I've been able to make you laugh a little bit. Let me know of any salty stories down in the comments below. I would love to know uh, some stories from y'all. Guys, let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.